Hey everyone, and welcome to another look at the Shadowlands beta. I'm Mystic, and today I'll be reviewing each of the four Covenant's signature abilities, and we'll be discussing what classes might want to pick them up to gain an edge in PvP, focusing mostly on their potential advantages in Arena. I'll be going through each of the Covenant's one by one, starting with my personal favourite for Paladins, the Night Fae. Those who choose the Night Fae as their Covenant gain access to Soul Shape. This turns you into a Vulpin, teleporting you 15 yards forward and increasing your movement speed by 50%. You're then able to reactivate Soul Shape every 4 seconds to teleport again. It lasts for 12 seconds and has a 1 minute cooldown. This teleport range is almost the same as a mage's blink, which we all know is an excellent mobility cooldown, making Soul Shape a really great way to increase your mobility. Now, for those of you who already watched my video explaining the Covenant, Soul Binds and Conduit system, you'll know that each Covenant comes with 3 Soul Binds, each of which offers abilities which can augment your Covenant signature ability. If you haven't already watched it, be sure to check it out after you're done watching this one. So the Night Fae have a total of 4 Soul Bind abilities which have an impact on Soul Shape's use in PvP. PvP. Nia lets you choose between Run Without Tiring and Stay on the Move. Run Without Tiring may have its uses in PvP, particularly for classes which lack any form of self-healing. And if self-healing is not a problem for you, then choosing Stay on the Move for the small decrease to Soul Shape's cooldown may prove to be better. Next we have Corrin who also has two abilities to choose from which augment Soul Shape in the form of Horn of the Wild Hunt and Wild Hunt's Charge. Horn of the Wild Hunt simply makes Soul Shape provide a 10% increase in movement speed to all allies within 40 yards, and honestly, 10% movement speed is just too low to have a significant significant impact on PvP. Wild Hunt's Charge on the other hand is a lot more promising. This turns your Soul Shape into a charge when used while out of combat, stunning your target for 1.5 seconds in PvP and ending your Soul Shape. This ability has the potential to be really powerful for classes that have limited mobility and want to engage in melee range as quickly as possible. The added Charge Stun is a nice perk for helping gain momentum quickly in the opener. However, this trait will mostly only be useful in the opener because of the combat requirement. It's also worth noting it may actually be impossible to get the Charge off in time against some comps on some maps because of the distance requirement as some classes may be able to get you into combat before you can charge. Either way though, with my testing so far, I have been able to get the charge off in time against some classes and it has proven to be quite useful. So. Which classes will benefit the most from picking the Night Fae as their Covenant and gaining access to Soul Shape? Well, first and foremost, any melee with relatively low mobility that need the added boost to keep up with high mobile targets. So think Rep Paladins, Enhancement Shamans, and even Arms Warriors who don't want to give away their charge so easily. Also, Wild Hunt's charge can go a long way to swinging momentum in these melee's favour as soon as the gates open. But, melee aside, even some casters can benefit from Soul Shape's 90 second cooldown teleport. Paladins and Priests are notorious for having poor mobility, and Paladins especially have suffered when it comes to being able to avoid crowd control against casters. With Soul Shape, both Priests and Paladins get a much needed boost to their mobility, and Paladins especially gain a way to avoid crowd control by instantly line of sighting an incoming cast. Next, let's look at the vent there. Door of Shadows is a 35 yard range teleport with a 1.5 second cast on a 1 minute cooldown. The issue with Door of Shadows is the 1.5 second cast makes this clunky to use and unreliable in high pressure situations. If someone is getting away, the gap closer can definitely help catch up, but the risk of their teammate interrupting you, or them getting to a pillar and continuing to line of sight you after you've teleported to them definitely exists. This is also in part because where you teleport to is telegraphed on the ground, meaning you won't be surprising anyone with this long range teleport. And the same goes for using it to get away when you're in trouble, the risk of being interrupted exists. Now, let's take a look at the 5 soulbind abilities which augment Door of Shadows. We have Agent of Chaos, Fancy Footwork, Watch the Shoes, Leisurely Gate, and Enduring Gloom. Now, Naji the Mistblade lets you choose between Agent of Chaos or Fancy Footwork. Choosing Agent of Chaos makes your Door of Shadows disorient all nearby enemies at the target location for 6 seconds when you appear. Now, this only lasts for 3 seconds in PvP, which makes this much weaker than at first glance. And, as previously mentioned, your enemies can also see the location you're teleporting to with a mark on the ground, which can help them avoid it. This makes the disorient quite unreliable in most situations. There are, however, some use cases. For example, you could use it to peel for your teammates by crowd controlling everyone around them when they're swapped to. And, another more more advanced technique would be using it to land crowd control, for example teleporting to a healer behind a pillar as a mage and blinding them into a polymorph. Again, it's relatively easy to avoid because of the long cast and telegraphed position on the ground, however it has potential. Alternatively, fancy footwork makes your draw of shadows increase your movement speed by 40% decaying over 6 seconds. This doesn't really provide high impact in PvP and so is not recommended. Moving on, Theotar lets you choose between Watch the Shoes and Leisurely Gate. Watch the Shoes makes Door of Shadows free you from roots and snares. While this does have some potential, the 1 minute cooldown and cast time makes this an unreliable method for breaking roots and snares. 
Instead, Leisurely Gate will give your Door of Shadows two charges, but increases its cooldown by 30 seconds. This makes the ability much more flexible as you're able to reposition twice in a shorter window, resulting in you being less likely to compromise your position. Some use cases will be completely crossing the map to reset a game while you're waiting for your cooldowns to come back. And finally, we have General Draven who gives you Enduring Gloom. This makes Door of Shadows grant you a shield equal to 15% of your maximum health, however it only lasts for 8 seconds. The length is quite short, which means this would only benefit you if you're using Door of Shadows to make an aggressive play. Relying on this for defensive purposes wouldn't help much, as by the time enemies reach you, if you're trying to get away, it's likely that the shield would have faded. So, which classes would benefit the most from the Venthyr's signature ability, Door of Shadows? Well, this honestly doesn't feel like too strong of a cooldown for increasing your mobility without purpose. However, classes that can make use of Door of Shadows to initiate crowd control on healers stand to gain a lot from this covenant. The two that stand out the most are Mages and Hunters. While the Fire Mages have Dragon's Breath to land Polymorph on healers alone, Frost and Arcane Mages don't. With Agent of Chaos, Arcane and Frost Mages can Polymorph out of the blind, and the concept applies to Hunters who could also use these tools to land CC on their own. Alright, next we're looking at the Necrolord whose signature ability is Fleshcraft. By channeling Fleshcraft for 4 seconds, you gain a shield equal to 20% of your maximum health. It becomes more powerful when used next to corpses, but that won't apply for arena. You'll aim to cast this as soon as you load into an arena to get it on cooldown and start the game with the absorb. Then, classes which can easily escape and reset will find the most value in this signature ability as they'll be able to recast it later in the game whenever things slow down in between their kill attempts. Perfect for classes like rogues. Alright, so what soulbind abilities improve fleshcraft in arena? Well, there's really only one worth talking about, as it's significantly better than the others. Plague Divisor Merileth gives you access to ultimate form, which makes you immune to crowd control while it's being channeled and then for 4 seconds after. Afterwards. This turns Fleshcraft into an ability that gives players an opportunity to outplay their opponents in specific circumstances. For example, a healer could pre-Fleshcraft incoming CC in order to immune it. Alright, so which classes would benefit the most from Fleshcraft? Well, pretty much any class that wants to buff their defensives can benefit from it, especially frail melee like rogues and ferals. However, most of its value comes from using ultimate form to immune crowd control. Just imagine pushing into Polymorph a priest. Before, you'd have to fake their premonition, which is now a shadow of death, and then you could get your CC. Now you'll have to fake death and then potentially have to deal with a fleshcraft CC immunity. You can take this a step further and actually immune instant incoming crowd control if you time it well. For example, fleshcrafting just as a druid gets into range to bash you. So, if you're a healer that wants an additional way to deal with incoming CC, the Necrolords may just be the right covenant for you. Finally, let's take a look at the Kyrian and their signature ability, Summon Steward. This gives you access to Files of Serenity, which restore 15% health and remove all curse, disease, poison and bleed effects. It currently does not work in Arena, which will likely make this the least played covenant in PvP. This is possibly because removing curse, disease, poison and bleed effects is incredibly overpowered in PvP. However, they may adjust how this works in Arena to perhaps allow for just a small health pot or something. But, just in case they enable this in PvP, let's take a look at any relevant soulbind abilities that impact this covenant ability if it were to start working in PvP. There's File of Patience, Ascendant File, Charge Additive, and Forge Light Filter. Pelagos gives you File of Patience, which makes your vials heal for 35% additional health, but all of its healing occurs over 10 seconds. Being able to apply a hot that heals you for 10% of your health every 2 seconds is unbelievably strong, and could make this covenant have the best signature ability if it ends up working in Arena. And even if it doesn't, if you're more interested in world PvP, duels and random battlegrounds, this soulbind ability could prove to be the best one for you. Next we have Clea, who can give you Ascendant File. This makes your files render you immune to curse, disease, poison and bleed effects for 15 seconds and could prove to be very strong against several specs including rogues, ferals and perhaps warlocks and dks. So if you want a way to counter these classes in non-rated pvp, this could be the answer. Finally we have Forgelight Prime Mechanicos, who comes with two interesting abilities. Charged Additive makes your file of serenity also knock nearby enemies away from you. Obviously this would be most fun on Z-axis maps, but again, this is all contingent on these files being enabled in rated PvP. Still though, if you're more interested in world PvP and random battlegrounds, you can definitely have a lot of fun with this ability. And finally, we have Forge Light Filter, which simply causes your file to automatically proc and heal you whenever you're reduced below 35% health. This one is not really comparable in strength to the healing increase from File of Patience, so would not be recommended in most cases. Once again, which classes will benefit the most from picking the Kyrian as their covenant and gaining access to Summon Steward? Well, without thinking twice, Classes with low or no self-healing will definitely have the most to gain from this signature ability. Think warriors and even mages who lost temporal shield and hunters who only have a heal on a long cooldown. These classes, which already have a decent defensive toolkit but lack strong self-healing, could rise to the top if they gain access to the strong and consistent self-healing
provided by the Kyrian. Pluses that also struggle when being trained by rogues or ferals could benefit from this, as it'll help them alleviate the pressure from the bleed effects. Historically, shamans have suffered when being trained by rogues, as have warlocks, although not to the same extent. Other rogues and ferals could also benefit from this to help them when being trained by themselves. But aside from the specific classes I just mentioned, if the Kyrian signature ability ends up working in arena and we're able to use file of patience for the 50% heal, this may just end up being the best choice for every class. However, it's very unlikely that this will happen, so ultimately we expect this to be the least played covenant in ranked PvP. Okay everyone, that about wraps up this video on the covenant signature abilities. I hope you're able to take something from this and can start thinking about which covenant you want to choose from when Shadowlands releases later this year. Don't forget to check out my guide explaining how the covenant, soulbind and conduit system works, and be on the lookout for future videos on each individual covenant where we'll be covering the class abilities to hopefully help you make a more confident decision in which covenant you want to choose for your class. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.